What's up, YouTube? So I thought a cool idea for today would be to go into my paramotor journey. So where I started, what I started flying, where I learned all that, all the way up into where I'm at right now, what I'm flying, uh, my agreement with Fly PPG. I get a lot of questions about that. And then, um, yeah, just everything in between, all the gear I've flown, flying uh, with Paradigm, things like that. It's been an awesome journey. So um, I do get a lot of questions about it, so I figured I'd make a video. And um, let's get in the air. Let's get in the air. Peace. So, side note, um, I'm waiting here for this park to open. And um, not only is it morning and am I drinking coffee, but every time I even think about flying, so they don't open this park soon. We may not be flying today because I may be driving home to change my pants. Crisis averted. Clear prop. New motor fires right up. beautiful day. Just got back from vacation. So back to reality. <laughs> All right. So let's get some altitude and get out of the way of these uh, beachgoers. Try not to blind you guys with the whiteness of my upper thighs. All right. So my paramotor journey. This is going to be the cliff notes of it because I could talk all day about this. So. Alright, I started paramotoring in 2015, got into it much like everybody else did. Um, I saw a YouTube video. No, it wasn't Tucker. Um, I think he just started making videos um, about this time, so I'm probably sure I saw some of his videos, but it was like just all the other random PPG videos you guys see. Uh, some of the OG guys, uh, Fly Guy Alberta, Fly, who's that guy in Pennsylvania, Fly, it's a PPG Flyer, that dude, he doesn't really make all that many videos anymore, but I watched him a lot, anyway, watched videos, um, and I said, holy crap, I cannot believe you can just do this, um, but at the time I was trying to get into FPV flying, like drone flying and stuff, and then I saw a pair of videos, I was like, well, that's a thousand times better than FPV, so, uh, at the time I was dirt biking, just gotten into a motorcycle accident, so a few motorcycle accidents, and I was like, all right, fine. I'll sell my dirt bikes and I will um, get a paramotor. Everyone thought I was crazy, right? You guys that fly, you've all heard it, right? You tell one of your family members, I'm gonna fly, and they're like, uh, you're nuts, man, that'll never happen. Well, now it's even easier because everybody trains and does it all over the country. When I was learning in 2015, it wasn't that many, but I was going to self-train, bought the PPG Bible, felt like I could do it. Um, I was pretty confident, but by a random chance, the um, there was a school in Indiana, right where I lived, 10 minutes from where I lived, at a, at a little airport. And at the time, there was Aviator, Paramotor, PPG, there was Team Fly Halo, Black Hawk, and then this school in, in Indiana. I was like, what? What a random... I was like, well, that's a sign. I got to go train. So I went there, saw my paramotor. The guy, Dave Halcom, at the time, he was the only one training there. The sport was small. He was awesome. Uh, put a motor on me the first day. Didn't fire it up, but he knew what he was doing. He put the motor on my back, and then I was like, all right, man, I'll be back. 
and uh, I think I paid him like $1,500 for lifetime training, something like that. And I trained in 24 hours. I literally uh, kited for a day, half a day, whatever, forward, reverse, all day, sweat, sweat my ass off. Uh, but it came naturally to me. So Dave said, basically, tomorrow when you show up, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna just tell you to go full throttle, and uh, you will be in the air. That's what we did. So we got my first flight in within a day. And then I flew there and only there for like months, right? So it's not like I trained there and then took all my gear and went home and flew by myself. No, first flight today, and then I trained there or flew there for a long time, right? Just honing my skills. It took me a while to be comfortable launching and landing from an area where I didn't have someone coaching me. Okay, so I and the gear I was on, I was on a Mac Para Muse 3 24 and a 26, so huge wing and a uh, mini plane top 80 and I bought that new. Then my first wing that I ever bought was a Rebo 3 and it was um, basically brand new. It was a, a demo wing, so I had flown a few times, but basically brand new. I bought a 23 meter Rebo 3, loved that wing. And I cut my teeth on that wing all the way through wing overs. Okay, then my next motor was the Scout. So I sold the mini plane and I bought a Scout Carbon with like, I think 29 or 25 hours on it. And it was it was awesome condition. And my second wing was a Hadron XX 20 meter. Um, so huge jump in wings. And uh, I usually don't recommend that to people. Actually, I don't recommend it, but it worked out for me. Um, I respected the wing and I, I, I took my time on it, right? And then I, I learned even more, right? It was a much more dynamic wing. Wing overs were much easier. Uh, but again, you gotta respect these, these wings when you move up to them, right? It's like, it's gnarly. Um, so yeah, Scout with the Hadron 20. Then I didn't like the 20 because I was, I was too lightly loaded on it. So I found an 18, exact same colors, loved it. I actually bought that off uh, Mitch Graham. If you guys follow Mitch G on YouTube, love his YouTube channel, cool dude. But I bought it off him. And uh, I, I flew that wing for a long, long time. Um, from there, I bought, oh, geez, what did I get? So I'm still on the Scout. I bought my uh, Sky Z Blade. That was an 18 meter Sky Z Blade. So I went from the Hadron 18 to the Sky Z Blade. What I liked about that was the Z Blade uh, was much easier to launch than the Hadron. The Hadron, uh, like a lot of Judek wings, you need to really uh, have a good launch technique, it's not forgiving, especially like in the beach here where it's like really windy, um, it was not a very forgiving wing, so I didn't like it, I didn't like not having the confidence in my launch, uh, and so the Revo 3 is my go-to wing, it's a much less efficient wing, uh, a much heavier brake pressure, um, but it was an awesome fun wing and it was sexy. Okay, from there, I bought my, whoo, <laughs> my own wing, <laughs> I knew I was going to hit it and I forgot it. Um, then I bought my 15 meter free ride, I believe. Yeah, I think that's the thing I bought. Um, I bought this free ride, and that's after flying a few free rides, and I uh, could not be happier with this wing. In fact, I just ordered another 15 free ride, which will be my first new wing ever. I've never owned a brand new from the factory wing, and it's custom colors. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited about it. Um, okay, so that was my wing progression. Now, from the Scout, um, I went to the Pluma, and if you guys have been following my videos, or you know, if you're new, whatever, here's what happened. So I went to sell the Scout. The guys at Fly PPG reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in working with them and uh, flying a Pluma. And the agreement was simple: you you fly the Pluma, continue to make videos like you're doing, and you know, we'll we'll work with you on you know gear price. I got a discount on some gear, um, and then we work together on giveaways and things like that. And that was the agreement. Okay, it was very, very handshake agreement, right? Um, and then, to be honest, I was gonna go with something new because I like the Pluma, but I, I've had a different motor every time I've flown, or every every motor I've gotten, I've got a different motor the next time. Same thing with wings, except for the free ride now. Um, and I like trying new things, and every time the like, new motors come out, I wanna try them, and I wanna try like the Mac Fly, I wanna own this, I wanna own a lot of things, and, um, uh, while I was getting ready to do that, the 100 hour mark on my old motor, you know, the guys at Fly PPG reached back out to me and said, hey, if you want to fly for us for another year, we will upgrade you to the new Pluma frame and that factory R that you flew at Bad Apples. <laughs> I was like, well, 
I'm absolutely not going to say no to that. And the only hesitation was when you're doing, when you're working with somebody, uh, it, it's not a job because the agreement is pretty lax. I can make videos whenever I want, but you still have to make videos. Like right now, I could just stop making videos if I wanted to, right? So you have that kind of over your head. It's, and I would make videos anyways, but it's just that feeling. It's like, well, now you have to make videos. So uh, just keep that in mind if you guys ever have a chance like that. But I, I'm, I'm happy with the way things are going. I've had nothing but a great experience with this. And um, like I said, this new motor is unbelievable. I can't believe it's mine. And it's just such an experience, such an opportunity that very few people get to have. Um, Okay, and I kind of skipped over all this, but the YouTube journey. So I started making YouTube videos back in 2017 or 18 or 19. I think it was 17 or 18. This is after I moved to South Carolina. And initially I just started uploading raw videos because um, I wanted to preserve them. I had no place to like store them and I wanted to show people my flying, like my family, my flying. But I did not want to bring hard drives everywhere and stuff. So I just uploaded raw footage to YouTube so I could show people. Then I started editing them little by little and I realized that I kind of like editing. It was like a fun artistic process. And then I got really into it, right? Then I just like from there is another landslide of another hobby. So it was new computers, software, camera gear, all this stuff to start making YouTube videos. and. I remember my buddy made uh, uh, made me a bet that I would hit 100 subscribers because he thought my videos were good. I was like, man, there's no way I'm going to hit 100 people are going to want to watch my videos. Hell no. As my voice just cracks. But I thought, hell no, dude. And um, I hit 100 subscribers and I was stoked. I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah, oh my god, 100 subscribers. <laughs> so cool. And um, now I'm at... Um, I don't know, 30, 37 or 3,800. And I've surpassed everything I've wanted to do with YouTube. Like, I, my 1,000 subscriber mark was amazing. I remember it. 2,000, 3,000, and I'm coming up on 4,000. I just can't believe it. So, uh, it's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky as hell. I'm fortunate that I get to do what I get to do. I'm fortunate that I got this opportunity to fly this gear, which I could otherwise absolutely not afford. And, um, yeah, man, it's just, it's kind of, it's not, none of it was on purpose. I just wanted to fly. I wanted to fly, and the rest of it kind of just grew into what it is. Um, and, again, it's, not, it's nothing huge, right? I'm not Tucker got right? Not one and a half million subscribers. That dude does that for a living. Um, but I'm, I could not be more happy with this and the way it fits into my life, everything. I've got two amazing kids, a beautiful wife fortunate to have a good job and I kept my job through the pandemic um, I'm working from home now so I see my kids all the time like 2021 has been fantastic 2020 and 19 was the worst not because of um, the pandemic even the pandemic was whatever to me but uh, some other shit have was the worst fucking two years of my fucking life and um, I'm just happy I'm very happy right now I could not be happier so Super stoked! Um, I get I get opportunities to fly with Paradigm, right? I'm, I get to fly in the Paradigm Aerobatic team. We get to fly at night. We, I flew at Sun and Fun, like the second biggest air show in the freaking country. It was huge. I flew at night in front of thousands of people, man. Um, I just get to do some stuff that um, 0.0001% of the population can do in their whole lives. So I'm super stoked. All right, let's go find Brad. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Just a tip, Brad. Bring it in, buddy. So that sandbar's a little far away. Um, this one's a little risky. as high as possible. <laughs> How cool is that? Oh, Brad! No! Don't land on the sandbar! Shit! 
So, Brad just made the mistake that I've made several times. Try to do a touch and go on the sandbar out here, and that sand is like knee deep. Oh no. Hopefully he can find a, a hard spot to launch from, because <laughs> there's no way off that sandbar, except by boat or swim. Oh, it looks hard. Oh, never mind, he's okay. Yeah! Okay, I guess I'm landing. Should come down? Alright. So, never mind. I've landed on this sandbar a couple times and it's been really hard. But, uh, I guess, or really soft, rather. But I guess it's okay. He looks fine. <laughs> Alright, bro. Gotta risk it. As some would say, for the biscuit. Still don't have this cover launched down. I can sometimes set it down. No, see, I can't. I'm the worst pilot ever, dude. When I saw you land, I was screaming, "No, no!" <laughs> because I've done this twice, and bo you you both times I broke through and almost ate shit. That's perfect right now. Yo, dude, it's, I saw you. I saw the tops of your feet. I was like, "He's okay. Yeah, yeah. He's okay." All right, man. So successful landing on the sandbar. Yes, first time. First time. First time. First successful landing because I've landed out here two times, like I said, and both times I nearly did not make it back off the sandbar. But what's cool about this is, oh, this is a puppy. This is a puppy. Come here, buddy. <laughs> so this is what flying is all about, right here. You fly out to a sandbar that you cannot get to without a boat, swimming, or a paramotor. So the only way we're getting back off this island is by our paramotor. I love it, it's the best. <laughs> I gotta bring something back for my son. Find him a good show. All right, so the wind's picking up a little bit, which is okay, but we're going to get back in the air, uh, and it is pushing us in the right direction, and for some reason, Brad only brought, like, a couple liters of fuel, so, um, kind of can't go too much further. Oh, yeah. Keeping your sand out of your motor and your <laughs> clips is crucial. Yeah, sometimes when it's this windy, it does suck. See, wind gets blown all over the place. And I don't know any like really good high wind launch techniques. So we're just gonna, as they say, wing it. Of course, I got a fucking cravat. Here we go. It's out! I got it. Thank you. Yep. I got it. Thank you. All right, so <laughs> what was going to be a perfect launch at a Corvette? All right, I'll take it.
check it though. Awesome time, about to dig into this surf shop Rio. And um, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that jazz. And um, see you guys in the next one. Peace.